Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my December Art Journal with Me video. Um, if you've been following along, I started art journaling back in January, so I would still very much call myself a beginner. I have done one spread each month, so this will be my 12th spread and um, I've been having so much fun with it. I really, really enjoy doing it. So grab some supplies if you wanna craft along with me. You can also do some different crafts if you want and just hang out and chat. Or if you just wanna chill, grab yourself a cup of coffee or cocoa, maybe a snack, some extra Christmas cookies, and sit back and relax and have a good time with me. So. Things I'm going to be using today are, first of all, my art journal, which I will have linked down in the description bar below. This is the one that I'm using. It is a 5x5, five five, I believe, and I really, really love the size of it. I also have some papers from the Stamp Area Romantic Collection. This is called Home for the Holidays. Really, really cute and I have some bits of ephemera that I have pulled out from my stash. I've got some different little tickets in like red, green, and cream color. I also have a little bit of um, like a vellum like with a green gingham stripe on it or plaid. Uh, this is see-through so that'll be interesting to see how that works on uh, the page. And then I have another few little bits of ephemera. This one has some Christmas recipes. This one just is a coupon that has an ideal Christmas gift at the top. And then this one is a receipt from a chocolatier. So I thought that might be fun since it's kind of in the color palette that I'm doing today. I also have my Tim Holtz Ideology Small Talk stickers that I use for my titles. I have a roll of washi tape. Um, for color today, I thought I might use my Stabilo Woodies. These are three-in-one pencil crayons, and I just pulled out like a Christmas red, green, and a gold. And then I also have for my personal item, this is the only roll of wrapping paper that I bought this year. So I thought it might be fun to kind of add a little bit of that into my page so that I can remember it. So that's everything I'm going to be using that I can think of so far. Maybe we'll add things later on, who knows. But let's go ahead and get into it. So I am going to first of all protect my work surface and then I'll be right back to get started. All right, so I've laid down a Tonic Studios craft mat and I am going to open up to my December spread. And by the way, I will be doing a flip through at the end of the year to show you guys everything that I created so far. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is just put down some washi tape to protect the binding of my book and make sure that everything stays together really well since this is a book with perforated pages so it could separate if the perforations got wet and I don't want that to happen so I'm just gonna um, lay down a bit of washi tape and protect that and it doesn't even have to be perfect it doesn't need to be straight it doesn't need to be smooth just whatever um, I'm gonna add another little bit in here because it didn't go all the way down just making sure it's not hanging over because I don't want the um, next you know the pages to get stuck together and this little bit I'm just gonna trim off with my cutter bee scissors and then we'll lay down a few more strips here just to kind of um, eliminate the blank page usually that's the most intimidating part is just trying to figure out where to start. So just not thinking about it too much at the beginning and um, adding anything to the page is going to kind of override your brain from, you know, that overwhelm like, oh my gosh, I just don't even know where to start, or where to put things. Um, just start putting things down and, you know, and then there's the only one way to go from there. You've already done it. There's stuff on the page, so there's no fear of the blank page anymore. So, all right, so I've got a little bit of washi tape down. I'm gonna start adding in 
some of these little bits of ephemera. Okay, I think my focal image is going to go on this side today, so just going to leave some empty space there for myself. And maybe just start adding a few little bits here and there. So the glue that I'm using is the Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength. I've been using this one all year long so far and I really do enjoy it. I've had no issues with anything coming back up or uh, kind of lifting from the page. Everything has been really secure. So um, yeah, I really do enjoy it. And I'm just gonna stick that one there. And then maybe we'll add a little bit over on this side for some balance. I'm just going to put it in sideways here because it's not really important that you read it. It's just about like adding stuff to the page, you know, adding um, texture. So I'll take this little bit. I like that stamp down in the bottom corner. So how are you guys doing? As I'm filming this video, it is December 16th, so it is just before Christmas, but the video probably won't get posted until um, the day after Christmas is what I've got on my schedule right now because I don't want to take a spot for, um, for my Christmas, my holiday card series. I still have one video left to go for that and I've actually already filmed it but I haven't done the voiceover or uploaded it yet so there will be 21 videos total in the holiday card series this year um, which is I think a little bit less than last year but that's as much as I could get to and I'm still happy like I wanted to get to at least 20 so I feel like 21 is a, a decent amount of videos in, in a card series, but um, the holiday card series is just my favorite of the entire year because I love Christmas cards. I love making them. I love getting ideas for them, just like all of the things. I love Christmas and it's been so much fun and I'm really glad that uh, a lot of you guys have said it's your favorite series too, that you really enjoy that, and it means a lot to me to hear, um, you know, that you guys are like fully involved as well and enjoying all the content that I'm putting out because it is a ton of work to, you know, come up with that many ideas for cards and to get all of that done during the holiday times when it's, you know, one of the busiest times of the year, if not the busiest time of year anyway. So um, it is a lot of work, but I really enjoy doing it and I'm glad you guys enjoy it too. So let's see, where is this actually? Let's put it down here. All right, so I think that's enough of that one. Let's added some of these little recipes. I think that would be fun. I don't know what's going to end up showing up later on, so I'm just going to add it here and there and we'll see how things go and what gets covered up. But I'm just tearing it down into a little bit more of a manageable size. So let's see, maybe we'll just stick it right there. It's kind of big, but some of it might get covered up. But anyway, so anyway, yeah, by the time you guys watch this, Christmas will be over and I really hope that you had a lovely holiday with your family, with your loved ones. I hope that you were able to grab some quiet moments for yourself at some point. I know the holidays can be super hectic and sometimes I know I personally start to feel, um, I don't know, like you're doing so many things for other people, for your kids, for your family, 
hosting different parties and sometimes it can be a bit frustrating or you feel like you're giving out a lot and not getting back as much in return perhaps um, and I just hope that you were able to find some quiet moments to like center yourself a little bit um, I've talked about it in one of my last uh, holiday card videos it actually went up today so um, it's the one with the girl reading a book by the Christmas tree using Hello Bluebird and that was a moment taken straight out of my own life. I, It's one way that I kind of unwind and decompress during all the holidays is um, to take a few moments at the end of the day. Usually everybody's in bed by then and just um, take a few moments for myself and read next to the Christmas tree. It's one of my favorite things. I love doing it. Um, this isn't going to work all together. It's just too big. Uh, it's just, I don't know, something about the twinkly lights on the tree. It just makes the story come even more alive to me. And it's just a way to decompress and I don't know, just take a few moments to myself to kind of like, um, unwind I guess and even if it's only 10 minutes and I don't do it every day I just don't have time to do it every day but even if it's just you know 10 minutes at the end of the day uh, when I probably should be in bed already it's often quite late at night um, just having that little bit of quiet really helps me um, I'm an introvert, so when things get really hectic and there's a lot going on, like especially around the holidays, I can sometimes have a hard time uh, feeling overwhelmed with everything. And so, yeah, it's just something that I do to take take time for myself and be away from other people and just recenter, I guess depends on your personality I guess if that's something that appeals to you or if you would find helpful there goes my hair getting stuck in things another personal element to add to the page my hair is always getting in stuff um, anyway you might find it helpful if uh, you have a hard time just processing all the hustle and bustle of the holidays as well so just taking little bits of this tag and adding it here and there. I don't know what's going to stay and what's going to get covered up, but just, you know, kind of filling out that empty space there a bit. And then I have this green ticket that I thought might be nice. I kind of want to tear it a bit though so that it's not so perfect. Maybe something like that. This is a little bit of a thicker card cardstock, so we'll see how that works in there. Hopefully it'll be fine. Maybe add that down here. And then I have this red one as well. Maybe right down there. I think I'll tear that one again. So I know I asked in that video like what were some of the ways that you try to unwind during the holidays or just take a few moments for yourself and because the video just went live uh, you know maybe like two hours ago I haven't gotten a chance to read all of the comments yet but I'm hoping to pick up some extra tips from you guys too in that and maybe find some new ideas for just decompressing. I do still want to add this um, bit here, this part that says Christmas gift. That that would be fun to kind of have on the page. So maybe we'll stick that up over here. Another thing that kind of gets me overwhelmed during the holidays is just all of the clutter. I don't know about you guys, but I 
am kind of like a, a bit of a neat freak. Not terrible, but I, I get really overwhelmed by clutter. Like my craft room is pretty much always clean. I know that I'm rare in that. A lot of people need that creative mess to to be able to create and I'm the exact opposite. I need uh, a clean space to be able to think and come up with new ideas. So um, anyway, my craft room is always cleaned up except for during the holidays because my I'm the one who orders all the, or shop, I not only orders online, I do a lot of my shopping online these days, but um, I'm also the, the person in this family who buys most of the gifts. And I think I want to add a bit of this vellum as well, just to kind of add accents. I'm not sure how it's going to look with the glue, but we're just going to try it and see kind of what happens here. Um, but anyway, I'm the one who does all of the Christmas shopping, and so all of the gifts end up getting stacked in my craft room because it's kind of the only place that the rest of the family doesn't go. And so, um, you know, just to keep stuff away from my kids and stuff, you know, it, it just ends up in my craft room. And so <laughs> I've got just stacks of boxes everywhere. Um, that actually works pretty good. I don't even see the glue, so that's nice. Um, yeah, I've just got stacks of boxes of gifts waiting to be uh, wrapped, and so they're just taking up space, and that, that just, I don't know, it just stresses me out for some reason. I don't know what it is about the clutter, but it's like the fastest way to give me a headache is just to see stuff not put away. I don't know. Anyway, I know I'm weird. I'm usually one of the only people like that. I feel like I feel like everybody else uh, thrives in the chaos. But anyway, not me. So yeah, I really like that. I really like how you're able to see to what's underneath, but it still adds those little pops of color here and there. Fun. I like it. But I'm very happy to say that um, the week between Christmas and New Year's, if all goes to plan, I will get to take some time off. I have been desperately just wanting a little bit of a break because like I said, it is quite overwhelming just coming up with all the ideas for the holiday card series um, and all throughout the year. Like it's it's a lot to try to come up with new ideas for cards just constantly and with all of the holiday preparations as well, like my brain is just absolutely fried. It's just so fried. I'm having such a hard time trying to think of new ideas right now and I know it's because I'm just kind of reaching a stage of burnout and I need to take a little break and do something different. I need to read some books or watch some movies maybe. Um, I haven't really watched any holiday movies yet this year. Um, so I, I need to just do something else, maybe do some writing and kind of refill that creative well a bit. So I'm really looking forward to having a, a week off. I know that I really need to do some marker maintenance after the holiday card series. My markers are, some of them are running dry again and they're, um, the caps are kind of gunked up. So I need to uh, take an, a day. It usually takes me an entire day because I'm, you know, meticulous about weighing each marker and, you know, not overfilling and everything. If you want, there, I um, I have a video on how I f refill my Copa, Copic markers and how I maintain them and keep them clean and everything. I have a video on my channel, which if I remember, I will link in the cards here at the top of the screen. Um, but yeah, I definitely need an entire day for that. That usually takes 
quite a while. Um, and yeah, I just want to relax. I really am looking forward to reading if I can. That would be really nice. I know that probably m most of my gifts are books because that's really all I asked for for Christmas. And, um, you know, I have a husband and three boys, so they're not real big shoppers. So what they have me do every year is they have me fill an Amazon cart with stuff I want and then they just pick what they want from that and then delete whatever they don't order and pretty much it's always books. Although this year I did also ask for um, a gift card to my local indie bookstore because I would rather support them but then they have to go to the store to get it because our store doesn't have anything online. Um, but anyway, and it's not, it's kind of out of the way, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, either way, I'm definitely getting books for Christmas, so it would be cool to be able to, you know, take a little bit of time to, to just unwind and read next to the Christmas tree. And yeah. Okay, so let's go to the paper pad here and figure out my focal image. We have these really sweet little bunnies and this mailbox, but I think I might save this for January or February and not include the house because it's obviously Christmas right there. Um, but snowy scene, I think, still works for those months. I was thinking... Maybe I would do the deer for the focal image today. I really love these trees in the background and these really pretty florals. So I think that's what I'm gonna use for today. I'll go ahead and tear that out. And I think it also goes really well with the scrap of wrapping paper that I have. So I still have to figure out a way to use that. But I'm thinking that I'm going to put the deer on this side. So I'm just going to tear that out and see how it fits. I know I need to make it quite a bit smaller for it to work. antlers there. All right, let's see here. Something like that is what I was thinking, so I think I might have to just tear up a bit more on this side. Yeah, something like that, and then I can bring in some of the other elements from this page as well. I think I'm going to go ahead and commit to the deer, so we'll glue that down. But yeah, I would love to hear how you guys spent your holidays, what you got up to, what favorite traditions that you guys do and love. Um, my family is kind of different. I grew up always celebrating Christmas on Christmas Eve. That's the main day for me. Um, we always went to my grandparents' house. They lived six and a half hours away, so it was a little bit of a trek, but um, we went there every Christmas. Um, it's my dad's side of the family, and he has four siblings. He has a twin brother and then um, one sister and all the rest are brothers as well. And um, I have lots and lots of cousins. Um, so my cousin, I'm the oldest, and then my cousin Stasha is after me. 
and then all the rest are boys until the very very end when my cousin Stacy was born and then there's one boy after Stacy so um, yeah uh, so it was a lot of fun uh, Stasha and I had a lot of fun growing up celebrating together and kind of uh, hanging out because the boys kind of congregated. We hung out with them too, but um, we kind of got up to our own things as well. And it was kind of like having a built-in friend, which was nice. Although we only saw each other at Christmas and Fourth of July. That was the only times that we got together, especially us because we lived so far north. Everybody else lives a lot closer there. So um, they may have seen each other more often, but um, we only went at Christmas and 4th of July because that was when we could get away. But I think I want these florals down here. I think that's pretty. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, it's pretty on the other side too, but I'm going to use this side. So um like I said, we always celebrated on Christmas Eve in my family. I'm not sure why or how that tradition started, but it has always been that way. And what would happen is on Christmas Eve, after dinner, the uncles would take all of us cousins out for a walk around the neighborhood and we would carol the neighbors. And in my grandparents' neighborhood, everybody puts out luminaries. So they're just like white paper bags with like sand at the bottom and uh, a candle inside. And so it would line the pathways and the driveways and everything. And it was just so magical. And it usually snows here, so um, a lot of times, you know, they were like glowing against the snow, which was really lovely. And so we would walk around the neighborhood caroling. Sometimes some of the neighbors would give us Christmas cookies. And inevitably, we would um, look up into the sky and see a red flashing light, which my uncles told us was Rudolph. And then when we made our way back to my grandparents' house, um, Santa had come and filled the stockings. In my family, Santa um, just fills the stockings. And so we would open those first. And then um, ever after that, everybody would gather around the Christmas tree and we would have our gift exchange. And then um, after that, you know, all of the cousins would play with their toys and the grown-ups would eventually find their way off to bed. And um, yeah, that was it. And then Christmas morning, everybody could sleep in. The cousins usually got up early because we were eager to play with our toys or whatever that we'd gotten for Christmas. The adults could sleep in and then we would have a Christmas brunch together. And then later in the day, um, a Christmas dinner. So that's just the way that I've grown up celebrating it always. And it's just what I absolutely love because it's our tradition, you know. So I'm thinking maybe down here. But maybe I have to make it a little bit shorter because I really don't want to lose this um, ticket there. Or should I? No, because it doesn't. Okay, just going to tear off a little bit more. So that's my family holiday tradition. And um, this year it might be a little bit different just because my kids are all adults. Um, my boys are 17, 19, and 21. And so they all have jobs and I'm not sure what their schedule is going to be yet. They don't know what their schedule will be yet. So we'll see if they have off or not. Um, I am hosting Christmas Eve at my house, um, but we'll see if the boys can make it or not. Um, it will be quite a crowd anyway even if they're not there but of course I hope that they are able to come and if not they'll have to 
just have some snacks when they get home. Um, when I host Christmas Eve, I do what we always did growing up, which is to eat finger foods and appetizers. That's what we have at our house on Christmas. And I love it. I, I don't know about you guys, but I love appetizers and dips and things like that. It's just like, I love that stuff. So uh, a day when I get to have a whole meal that is only that kind of food it makes me so happy. So that's what I always have at my house when I host Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, so... I still have to figure out my menu completely. I have like a Pinterest board of ideas saved. And then usually I do some of the same stuff every year because they're like family favorites. But then I always try to mix it up and add a few extra things here and there. So, you know, I just like to try new things. That's all. So I'm thinking what should I put? Maybe I'll that up there in the corner or do I want this shorter one up in the cor in this corner but yeah if you guys do something special for Christmas every year if you have special traditions or dishes that you always make or eat i would love to hear about it i just love i love christmas and i love hearing about how other people celebrate the holidays i just think it's so cool how everybody has their own unique things that make the holiday special so let's see i think i'm going to separate these two out and i'm going to put that one up there Just kind of tearing off the edges to make them a bit more organic so everything isn't so perfect. Um, yeah, I am like a huge perfectionist, so being intentionally not perfect has been an adjustment for me, but I, I find it really freeing, and I'm really glad that I started art journaling this year because it has been like a revelation, you know, it's for my creativity to see that there are other ways that you can do things that are um, that don't require so much planning and forethought because obviously with my regular card making videos you know I have to plan out each card ahead of time and I can't just kind of come up with something on the spot because I need to you know show you guys how to do something new otherwise why would you bother watching my channel you know instead of someone else's so um it does require a lot of planning and I am still planning on doing a video in the new year about how I come up with my ideas that is coming um I just had to get you know bumped because of the holiday card series it's just um, this time of year, from from Halloween until the end of the year, that's my only focus, pretty much. So um, I'm going to wash my hands because they're really sticky, and then I'm going to see what to do next. All right, so I was thinking about what I wanted to do on this page to kind of tie everything together. I like how the florals are doing that, but this kind of cool toned scene with the blue trees in the background is not kind of mimicked over here and that's bothering me a little bit so I'm going back to this paper pad and I actually found this page here with this little deer in the distance and I know I can't use a ton of it but I'm hoping that a little bit of this will be enough to just make the papers seem or not the papers but the pages seem a bit more cohesive so I'm going to try, in case I want to use some of the rest of this on a different spread, I'm going to try not to tear up more than what I need for this scene. But I'm just going to come up here and try to get a few of these trees. And 
I'll just tear that out and then I'll kind of go from there. Maybe I need to adjust it, you know, the size of it a bit, but um, that way I still have that cabin and these mountains and the berries and stuff if I want to use that for something else. So I'm thinking something like that would be good. Like it doesn't need to be huge, but just something to, like I said, just tie things together a bit more. Probably would make sense to lose that tree, but I actually really like that tree, so I'm thinking I can get this tucked behind a little bit. Let's see if I can get this up. Maybe I can. Just kind of tuck that behind a little bit so it doesn't look like such an awkward shape. Okay, let's just go with it. And I actually really like this gold fleck on the background. I think that would be nice. So I might end up incorporating a little bit of that somewhere throughout as well. There we go. Like I said, I have like just little bits of ooh looks like I am at the end of my glue stick and I do not have a new one so that is going to have to be remedied very soon <laughs> have to get another one um, I just get it on Amazon and uh, yeah it's just the easiest for me so let's tear off a little bit more of All of the products that I use, by the way, will be, will be listed and linked in the description below the video. And they are affiliate links to Amazon. So if you purchase something from there using my links, as long as you check out within 24 hours of clicking on them, then it gives me a little bit of credit. So that's always a nice way to support my channel if you're interested in doing that. And I really do appreciate it. So let's see, just a few more spots here and there to tie in that gold. See what I can squeeze out of that uh, glue stick still. Maybe put it with the torn, uh, uh, the, t the white paper core on the outer part. You know what, that's covering up too much of that flower, so. That's better. Just sticking it here and there kind of to tie things together. Kind of making it almost like a border. So I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I will be doing a flip through of this whole year of art journaling spreads. Um, I don't know when I'll post it, probably at the end of the last week of the year or um, or maybe into January, I'm not really sure yet, but uh, I will be going through and showing you guys all that I've done in my first year. Um, it's been really fun, like I said earlier, I just have really enjoyed it. And I plan on continuing to do it in the new year as well. I know they haven't been super popular videos as far as views, but I really enjoy creating them and that's what I feel is important for me that, you know, that it kind of just gives me renewed energy for, you know, my other creative endeavors. I'll just fill in some of these gaps up here. And then I still have my wrapping paper, so I'm going to look through that and figure that out pretty soon here, too. Add that. It's kind of torn up, but that's okay. You can see a little bit of the word Christmas there. All right, let me see what to do about the wrapping paper before I end up without any room for it. 
Okay, so I have cut out a few little pieces here from that wrapping paper. By the way, that wrapping paper was from Martha Stewart. Um, I just got it at TJ Maxx. It was $3.99. Um, but I thought it was really, really beautiful. So, with the gold foiling. Anyway, so I just cut out a few of the floral images and I'm going to add those on there. Um, I went ahead and did those off screen because I don't want the video to be too long, especially right now, um, you know, during the holidays. I know everybody's busy and still has things to do with New Year's coming and everything, so I just didn't want the video to be too long. Hopefully this one won't be. We'll see. <laughs> kind of hard because I, I have no way of knowing because my video, you know, it shuts off all the time. So every 10 minutes it shuts off automatically. So I just pause it whenever I can so that it, that doesn't catch me off guard. Um, so I, I never have any idea how long a video is until um, I look at the footage afterwards and, you know, try to edit as much as I can. I'll just shift that a little bit more towards the crease so I don't cover up too much of that little deer. Should I even, I even just tear that off there? All right, and then I have this one, and I think I'm gonna trim off some of this one as well. So maybe we'll just. make it a, you know a flat edge so it can go right up to the top there and then we'll glue that on and I think that glue stick is done <laughs> so I will definitely have to get a new one before January let's see get that up at the top all right, so I'm gonna grab some white gesso and start to knock some of this back and we'll see how that goes. So the gesso that I'm using is the Pro Art Gesso, but any white gesso will do. And I just shake it up and then I just use whatever ends up in the lid. Um, and by the way, I did end up sticking in a few more <coughs> of these little bits of text. It was actually from A Christmas Carol. And so you can see like there's Mrs. Cratchit and um, I don't know if any of the rest of it. Oh, there's the Cratchits there. Uh, so I just added a little bit of that because um, I thought it was fun to have that bit of text in there and just tie in the Christmas Carol. So um, what I'm going to do is just take a little bit here and there and just kind of dab it and pounce my fingers and kind of blur some of these lines together where things kind of overlap each other. Um, I can also kind of mute down some of the things that I don't want to be quite so prominent, like this whole Christmas gift thing. I want it to be visible, but just not so black. So I'm going to kind of just soften it a bit by adding a tiny bit of gesso over top. And then just kind of blend the edges of the different papers together. You could also use a paintbrush if you don't want to get your fingers dirty, but I don't mind and I I like being able to have that bit of control so I know exactly where that gesso is going and how much of it I'm laying down because I can tell by feel, you know. So you can already see kind of the difference between where the edges of these pages are, you know, the, the different edges of the layers. And then this one here, you can see they're much more crisp. And I'm just trying to kind of soften that. Just a little here and there. And if you get somewhere you don't want it, as long as you're quick, you can kind of wipe it up with your fingers. Like some of that red script kind of showing through there a little bit. Can't tell what it says anymore, but that's fine. It wasn't, you know, that big of a deal. It was just some little bits of 
ephemera, you know, it wasn't anything significant to me, just kind of tied in with the theme. So if it gets covered up, that's totally fine, but it's nice to have a little bit of the element showing. I really like this green and red together here. I think that works well for Christmas. And there's five people in my family. So just kind of ties in with that as well. All right. So I'm going to go wash my hands. And while I am gone, I'm sure that this will dry because it dries super fast. And then I will coat everything in a layer of clear gesso to just seal it all together. The clear gesso I'm using is the Dina Wakely Media Clear Gesso. And I'm just going to grab a bit of that and then, oh, I forget every time, you guys, every time. Um, I'm just going to add a bit of parchment paper underneath so that the pages don't get stuck together because this kind of acts like a glue as well. So I just want to be sure that, you know, my pages don't stick together. So, okay, I'm going to coat this in a layer of clear gesso. Just a nice thin layer. It's going to seal everything together and also it primes your page for any other medias that you want to add on top. Making sure that gets in the crease there. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to heat set it. My heat gun is off camera. Um, it's pretty loud, so I just like to do it off screen. And really, who needs to watch that, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to keep the heat gun moving across the page so it doesn't scorch anything. And do that until everything is dry and then I will be back to finish up. Okay so I think I want to add some stenciling. I haven't done any stenciling in quite a while so I thought that would be fun and I have the Lawn Fawn Snowflake stencil. I forget what the name of it is but I will have it linked down in the description bar below as I always do. And I thought it would be fun to use the Lawn Fawn Fairy Dust stencil paste because it's sparkly. So it would just add a little bit of shimmer to the panel, or the pages, I mean. Thinking something, let's try that, let's try it. We're gonna move it around a bit. So I'm just gonna take a palette knife to scoop a little bit out. That's probably way more than I need. Let's take half of that, okay. And then I'm just going to kind of smoosh it through and add a few little snowflakes. Here and there. So these will be clear but sparkly. So I'm going to lift that up. And it's going to be hard to see that right now, but um, should be more visible if I add some color to it in a minute here. I'm going to add a few more coming down the side. And maybe some down here as well. Kind of picking a few places to highlight and add them. Maybe up here. And down this side as well. And maybe this large one. Why not? All right, so when you're using stencil paste, you want to clean off your stencil and your palette knife really quick because it will 
harden like a rock on there and ruin your stencils and your palette knife. I think I'm going to add one more right here. Hopefully I'm not smooshing any of the others there. All right, I'm going to go wash this stuff off and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did that, dried everything, and then I actually went in and added a few more snowflakes and dried those as well. So they're kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can see them in the light or not, but I'm gonna add some color to them to help them stand out a bit. And I actually changed my mind. I may still use the woodies, I'm not sure, but for the snowflakes, I think it makes more sense to go with like blue. So I have an aquamarine and a blue sapphire. So we'll see how that looks. I'm gonna start lighter with the aquamarine. And grab a paintbrush. I've got some water off to the side here. And I think what I'm gonna do is actually like pick up some on a paintbrush, pick up some color and try adding it that way. We'll see. I've never done this with these before, so we'll see how that works. Does it... I just want something subtle, so that might actually be what I want. I just want something to help those snowflakes stand out a bit, you know, so that you actually see that they're there. So I'm just kind of like painting it on there, pouncing it here and there, adding some of that color to emphasize them. Not too much over the flowers because I don't want them to turn blue or purple or anything, but just a little bit. So this is the lighter of the two shades, like I said, and I think I will come in with a little bit of the darker blue as well. Once I have a little bit of this kind of pounced here and there. I get everything that I wanted to, I think so. So let's try the blue sapphire. really coming out that much though. I think this one is a, a better match for the blue in the pattern paper which is what I was looking for. But now the question is do I want to add blue to the edges or do I want to go back to Christmassy colors. Well, let's try with a little blue and see how it goes, I guess. Just subtle. Okay, so that definitely helps snowflakes because it really catches on that raised texture of the paste. like the blue there. Still missed a spot up there. It's a little bit wet there. I'm going to go back to the, the aquamarine for some variety in here as well. This one has a bit more of a green tone in it because it has that aqua, so I think it does fit nicer with like the, the green foliage there. So this 
wasn't the direction I was planning, but I do like it. And there is a lot of red and green on there, so I think it's fine not to have it on the edges. So do you guys have any plans for the new year? Do you do anything fun, go to parties, host parties, anything? I pretty much usually just stay home and uh, I take down all my holiday decorations. I like to start the new year fresh with kind of none of the trappings of the previous year in it. So I always take down all my decorations on New Year's Eve and then have some food and watch the ball drop on TV. But that's pretty much it. We're not really, we don't do much for, for New Year's. But it's still nice and cozy and it feels good to have the house kind of refreshed and reset for the new year. I think I'm going to do some white splashes. So I'm going to take my Dr. P.H. Barton's Bleed Proof White and I'm going to add a little bit of an acrylic block here. Add some water to that. Is it going anywhere? I guess a little bit. Maybe I need more water. There we go. Now I'm getting some. I think especially because it's a Christmas spread, it um, just fits the snowy theme. Just trying to avoid the, the deer's faces as much as possible. Okay. So I'm going to dry this quick and then I'll be back to add a title. Okay, so I can remove these now and everything is dry. So I'm going to grab a title from my Tim Holtz Small Talk stickers and let me see what I might want to use today. Let's just take a look here. Okay, I think I'm going to go with A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, which always makes me think of the Disney song, but um, this is kind of like the culmination of my dream to start art journaling for so many years, and I just kept putting it off for so long because I was so intimidated, and then this was the year I finally embraced that, so I think that's a good sentiment to carry you know, finish up the year. And then I think maybe love yourself first. See possibility everywhere. And maybe never doubt your instinct. I like that one. And get it off. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I think we're going to put this one on this page right under the deer. Right there. Is that straight? Hopefully. And then maybe move yourself first. Never doubt your instinct. And 
a possibility everywhere. Yeah, I don't think this is straight. It also doesn't want to stick because of the the um, snowflakes underneath there. So I may have to add a little bit of glue under there to make sure that it's really well adhered. I'm going to grab a black gel pen and I'm just going to outline these a bit so that's more incorporated into the page. It's a little bit tricky there because of the embossing paste. Hmm. I wonder if I should switch to my micron. It's a little bit darker. I wonder if it would go over things a bit better. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to have to add a little bit of glue under that one. Doesn't have to be perfect, just just to draw your eye to the, the sentiments. Okay, we have to put some glue under those as well. I'm just gonna grab my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue because I can kind of squeeze it underneath there. Hopefully that'll be enough to hold that down. Those seem like they're okay. I'm not going to pull them up if they don't want to come up. All right. So we need a date. So let me grab my Ranger Archival ink and the date stamp. And it is December 16th. All right, where do I want to add it? I can't do it there because of the snowflake. I could do it right there or maybe just right here. Hopefully it'll go on that um, paper, but I think it will because I have the clear gesso over top, so it's not as slick as it was when I first added it. So I'm just going to make sure this is inked up really, really well. Just holding that in place while that glue dries really quick. All right, let's go for it. Ah, shoot. All right, well, that's what I get for trying to do things backwards. All right. Let's just fix it with a gel pen. You can kind of see where the stamping was so I can follow it. I think I will actually switch to this pen, but this one is a little bit thicker. I don't have a super thin one, so I didn't want to go straight in with it. Oh, somebody's coming home because Gemma is barking. You guys can probably hear that. Well, good enough. All right, so that is going to finish up my page for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and that you had fun chatting and <sighs> sorry about that. Um, thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me this year and going on this new journey with me. I hope you had as much fun watching as I did creating them and I'll see you again in the new year. All right. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Bye-bye.